Hi, welcome to another edition of Business Bites. My name is David Ty, the Managing Director of Bauer Media Northern Ireland. And each week we catch up with someone in business and get some insight and information about what they're up to and how they're getting on. Well, this week it's my pleasure to welcome our special guest. It's Russell Beggs, who's the Head of Engineering for the VP of Engineering, I should say, for ESO. Russell, welcome to Business Bites. Morning, David. Pleasure to be here. Well, it's great to have you. Uh, let's get straight into our conversation. So just walk us through the ESO story. Tell us a little bit about uh, what is ESO and how did we get to where we got to? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the story of ESO starts with our CEO, Chris Dilley, who was a former paramedic and firefighter who realized there was a better way in which he could be informed in order to, to deliver better care to other individuals. So. He met up with a software engineer in Austin, Texas, in somewhere called Austin Java. They started in that place, and you know that was in 2004. Fast forward to 2022, where we're very much delivering on ESO's mission to improve community health and community safety. And the way we do that is by identifying trends in data that help the emergency services, such as hospitals and fire stations, to deliver better patient care, to prepare for better for fires, and to ensure provider well-being and improve operational efficiency. So it's really people are at the heart of it and it's grown exponentially over that time. That's great. And you've got offices in Belfast and in uh, and the USA, is that right? That's right, yeah. So we have an uh, office in Belfast. We've got offices across North America. So we've got Halifax, Nova Scotia, Des Moines, Iowa, Bell Camp in Maryland, and uh, Bellingham in Washington, as well as the headquarters in Austin, Texas. Wow, so it's a real um, it's a real success story. So um, you, you mentioned that it's software for frontline workers, essentially. So you know, let's break that down. If um, if if I'm uh, unfortunately taken ill and an ambulance has to come for me and I'm in the back of it and I'm going to hospital, how do I know or will I ever know that I've uh, bumped into anything that belongs to you? How does that work in the real world? Yeah, yeah. So I think the, the important thing there is that making sure that the providers are providing the right level of care. That's their, their primary responsibility is looking after you as a patient whenever you're in the ambulance or you're out on, on, on the scene. And secondary to that is like documenting what happened. So the documentation has to be straightforward, has to be easy to use. So the applications we write for our frontline providers are really straightforward. And, uh, you know, that, that background that Chris and others in the industry bring to ESO allows us to really focus on what does that user-centric experience look like for those um, primary care providers. The next part of that is, well, that's one thing. What happens in the field is a very different set of circumstances to what actually happens in the hospital. So whenever you see, are seen by the doctors in the hospital and the nurses, there's a lot more information that's gathered at that point in time. So the real question then becomes like, how do you have bi-directional transfer of that information so that you can improve the outcomes for, for patients. So what you might find in the field might be completely different to what a doctor found. And if you can identify trends in that, then you tell the paramedics how to do a better job when they're out there in the field. Well, um, like, like all great software developments, um, I'm sure it's very, very complicated to put it together, but it sounds exceptionally straightforward uh, at the end of the day uh, to the end user. So that's uh, that's really, really interesting. Um, uh, you know, what's What are the challenges at the minute for uh, you know your industry. What are the what are the challenges in terms of you know recruitment or you know educating our people? You know, do we have a very educated workforce? What, what, what challenges do you face? Yeah, you've, you've hit the nail on the head. Talent is the big thing. Like, how do we attract and retain the best talent? And we're, we're pretty good at the retention side of things, but the attraction is the real challenge because. Uh, with the pandemic everyone worked remotely and now a lot of people are wanted and the, the you know the economy is driven forward by this sort of remote working and uh, led to this great reshuffling as some people like to call it and how do we differentiate ourselves across these different locations and how do we stand out and i think with ESO we, we, we have a great story to tell there we're very different to other tech providers and in, in that we're we're not in financial services and insurance which are great companies and they've been in Belfast for a very long time, but we provide something that healthcare space, which is really focused on tech for good, how do you improve people's lives and make a real, real difference. So that does help with the attraction side of things. But part of this is diversity and inclusion. And another part of it is how do we make sure that Belfast has this growing workforce? So one of the challenges Belfast absolutely faces is 
that we have been recognized as a great tech hub for companies to come here and invest. And I've done a great job of going out there and saying great things about us. So we have this reputation that's growing, but we need to make sure that we're keeping ahead of the workforce and we keep producing fantastic talent from our universities, from our apprenticeship schemes and other ways in which we are growing talent uh, indigenously in this, this country to meet the demand that's out there. Well, I was going to say, you've got a broad horizon looking across many different markets. Um, how do you think our part of the world uh, sits? You know, where, where do we sit in that kind of spectrum? Are, are we doing well? Are we, uh, you know, in, in comparison? Yeah, I think this this part of the world's doing a, a great job. I think we, um, especially in, in Northern Ireland in particular, we were probably going from a a place in behind with uh, where we were with the troubles for a long time. But what we've now seen is that we've moved forward and we've leapfrogged. And it's a it's a place that's really attracting a lot of talent, a lot of great companies to want to invest in Northern Ireland, uh, looking at what the government's priorities have been around in, in investing in tech and growing these companies has been uh, and what the universities are producing as well. So when we look to the future, um, and we look at future trends and future opportunities. Um, let's talk about ESO. You know, wh wh where do you see the future for the business? You're already in the States. You're doing very well here in, in, in our part of the world. W what's left to do? Well, yeah, there, there, there's so much more to keep doing. I think that's part of the beauty of our mission. It's to continuously improve the health that we uh, the, the care that we provide and improve the health and the safety of our community. So that's that's a goal that will always be beyond our reach. And that, that's the beauty of it. So, you know, that's going to affect how we expand internationally. We're, we've already got some customers in the NHS here. We're looking to other English speaking countries and uh, very much want to expand that mission of ESO across the globe and provide better care and have increased amounts of data so we can identify better trends uh, and, you know, really deliver on that mission. When we talk about, um frontline workers and specifically healthcare, obviously we are in, in this part of the world, we seem to potentially have the pandemic, hopefully in the rear view window. That's not the case in all parts of the world. How has that challenged your, uh, your business and your industry? Yeah, so the, the challenge itself is the same one that everyone faces. I guess, how do we predict ahead of time where we're going to be around a lot of different stuff. And we are very, very fortunate to have a fantastic chief medical officer on staff, given how, how the focus of our company. So Brent, Dr. Brent Myers is, is phenomenal. And he's done a lot of great work looking at lots of different data that we capture in the field. So as a prime example of this, if I roll back to March uh, 2020, was it? It was, <laughs> it's hard to remember exactly when it was. Before the whole world shut down, we were starting to see what are the, the uses of um, PPE ahead of time? And we were able to predict ahead of time before the media got wind of this by a couple of weeks that if we continued at the rate of use of you know, PPE that was happening, hospitals, front care, frontline workers, they were gonna have challenges. So that's the sort of data that we have. And we look at um, why people are collected in, in ambulances, why they're being transported to, to hospitals. We can look for these trends and see when the uptakes are happening ahead of time. Uh, look at those leading indicators rather than the lagging indicators and hopefully help, um, help folk plan ahead and adapt as, as well as possible. Well, it's good to see that data is being used, um, you, know, uh, you know, wider than just the, uh, the sort of primary purpose that it was that it was designed for. Um, it's good to see. How are we doing in terms of recruitment, especially, you know, there's always been a challenge around uh, uh, women in tech. Yep. Uh, how, how do we do uh, in, in this part of the world? And, and uh, is, is that on the agenda for ESO? Oh, it's absolutely on the agenda. And, and personally, I've got two young daughters, so it's personally on my agenda as well. I, I genuinely think we've we've come a long way in, in the last while. We've come away in ESO, but we've got a long, long way to go. So, you know, looking ahead to, to my children and where they're going to be. I know there's a Women Tech Makers Conference that we're sponsoring this week and uh, this weekend. So I intend to be there with my daughters to get them exposed to STEM and things that they wouldn't ordinarily ordinarily be exposed to um but yeah we're, we're doing a good job i just think we, there's so much more we could do and can do and need to do and that starts with encouraging our kids from a very young age to be involved in the, the in subjects that they wouldn't necessarily have been exposed to previously russell it's been great to find out about eso we wish you and the whole team continued success and thanks for being our guest this week thank you